Hello, I'm Mark Sotman. I'm here to talk to you about the game of Galactic Destiny. Galactic Destiny is a game that I enjoy, but its rulebook has tended to scare off some people, so I'm going to try to explain the game in an easier way, to, easier to understand rules, as well as to go through some examples here. Now, in the game of Galactic Destiny, the goal of the game is to make your political party the most dominant one in the galaxy by using politics, manipulation, and war. Throughout this tutorial, I'll be referring to the revised rulebook. If you haven't already done so, I would encourage you to go to the goldenlaurel.com website or to check the file section on the Board Game Geek where you can download the revised rulebook for free. There are two ways you can win this game. Your political party can either control all five of the ministries or you can control ten of the sectors on the board. It is a semi-cooperative game though, so that if any time the infestation controls ten sectors on the board, everybody will instantly lose. Um, in addition, there are six races and there are also six political parties. You will control one of the political parties and your senators will, have, will consist of people from the various races. If you'd like to have some additional information on the parties and the, uh, the, and the races, I would encourage you to take a look at the rule book. I'd like to describe some of the components in this game here. Let's start with the board first. Um, you'll see a number of things on the board here. You'll see a place for the uh, five ministries over here as well as for the rebellion card. If there are any event cards which are active, um, they will be placed over here. You also have in the election track that tells you when you have an election um, in the Senate phase. Next thing you're going to notice is there's a, in the very large part here is there are 60 sectors on the board. Each of the sectors has a variety of information on them which is also so summarized on the uh, corresponding uh, sector card here. Let's start with sector 30 which is one of the uh, starting sectors for the uh, party of the people here. The first thing you'll notice is there's a number in green that signifies how much money you're going to get from this uh, sector each turn. The number in purple is how much influence you will get from this sector from each turn. In the middle here you'll see the number of the sector and if it happens to be in gold that means it has a special ability. If it has a special ability there will be a corresponding ability card for it and you will also see that information summarized over here in the corner. Um, for instance if you're starting in sector 30 its special ability is that the first senator that your party recruits each turn will cost five less money. Um, if it's one of the uh, starting sectors, you will see the party's icon below the, uh, the number. Over here in the number in red is the natural defense of the sector. And then many of the populations of these sectors are biased towards a particular race or a political party. And you'll see those icons here on the sides of the board also. The next thing I want to show you are the uh, party cards. Each of the parties has one of these cards here. It has the name of the party as well as the symbol of the party here on the card. It then kind of discusses what the ideology of that party is and you're able to, to do that to a role play if you'd like to during the game. You'll see two influence tracks here. One of these is for influence and one of them is for money. You'll use these small resource markers here to signify where you are and you'll slide them up and down. One of them will show the individual units and then the other one will show in groups of 10. So for instance, if you had a 45 influence, you would have one of them on the 40 icon and then another one on the 5 icon here. The game also uses a variety of uh, these control markers here to signify which sectors are controlled by the various parties. There's two sides to these. If you're trying to campaign or invade a sector, you'll put it with its gray side down. Once you control that sector, you will turn it over so the color side is facing up. The next thing I kind of want to describe to you are the senator cards. Each of the uh, parties has a starting senator card here, and that's signified by that symbol down here at the bottom. You'll see a number of things on these cards. You'll see the diplomacy value of that senator here in purple. Um, the command value of that which is used in invasions is over here in the red number and you'll see the name of the senator as well as a picture of him. You'll see a description of his race as well as his political party bent over here. And then you'll see whether it's a male or a female. There's some action cards that require uh, like seduction which involves the different sexes there. You'll, when you, your starting senator is free, but the other senators you're going to have to bring in from your reserve pool by paying some money, and that cost is shown over here. 
The next thing are there's a variety of action cards that are used throughout the game here. And once again, you'll see a variety of numbers and uh, text on them. The top of the card tells you what the name of the card is. Some of the cards are going to cost you money, and that will be shown over here in the value in green, how much money you have to spend, and you'll cause your resource marker to go down that much accordingly. Um, the, no cards can be played during the galactic phase, but if they can be played in the other two phases when it says time, it will list general. Um, otherwise, it will list either Senate or Intrigue phase, depending on which phase you're allowed to play them. Some cards you can play for free, but other ones require your Senator to take an action and exhaust them for the remainder of the turn. If that's the case where it says action, it will say yes, and once you play it, you'll take your Senator card and you'll rotate it 90 degrees to show that he has been exhausted for the turn. Finally, you will see a description of what the card's ability is here. The last thing you're going to see is a number here in red. That is the uh, priority of the card. Um, this comes into play when one party plays a card and then another party tries to play a different card to interfere with it. The rule is, is that your card can interfere with another action card if the priority of the card you're trying to interfere with has a number that's the same or higher than the one that you're playing. For instance, if one of the parties played a sabotage card which has a priority of four, I could respond by playing a ghost in the dark card which has a priority of zero because four is larger than zero. And the effect of the ghost in the dark card is that I can play this immediately after an action card has been played. I pay three money plus the cost of the card and then negate its effects. The last thing I want to describe is the hand size. During your turn, you can have as many cards as you want in your hand, but at the end of your turn, you're going to have to discard down to seven. One of the key concepts in Galactic Destiny is corruption and shadow. Corruption represents the soul of the Senator being stained with evil acts, whereas shadow are marks of the Karas as they begin to consume the Senator's soul. Uh, both of them are used the same marker. If you're showing the uh, gray side, that represents corrosion. If you're showing the colored side, that represents the uh, shadow token. There's a variety of ways you can earn corruption tokens. For instance, if you look at the minister cards, many of them have a corrupt ability in the lower portion of their card, and they can gain one to five corruption by invoking those. In addition, every time you launch an invasion, you will gain two corruption. Now, if one of your senators is acting as an admiral, he will get the uh, two corruption. If you're just sending a fleet without an admiral, then you get to choose which senator you wish to apply those to. In addition, there's various laws and deals that are in this game that can be broken. Every time you break one of those, you're going to gain two additional corruption. Now, if you break the law, the law is considered broken for that entire turn, so you won't earn additional corruption if you break it more than once in a turn. With a deal, once a deal is broken, it's considered broken for the rest of the game, and no one will earn any additional corruption for violating that earlier deal. Now, the way shadows work is when you accumulate three of your uh, corruption tokens, it is replaced by one shadow token. So you'd pull two of them off, and then you would take the remaining one and flip it over, and it, it is now considered a shadow token. Whenever you have to add them up, the uh, shadow token counts as three corruption. Now, you're allowed to have up to four corruption tokens on an individual senator at a time. However, when you hit the fifth one, you're going to have to immediately convert three of those into a shadow token. Some of the impacts of having corruption or shadow is that it's going to lower your diplomacy value, which is going to have an impact when you go into votes or try to do campaigns. In addition, as the senators become more evil, it makes the infestation and the Karas more powerful. So when you do infestation roles or if you do uh, um, invasions against infested sectors, the infestation is going to have additional die or modifiers to make them more powerful. However, there are some gifts as you get, accumulate the uh, shadow tokens. For instance, for every shadow token a senator has, he gains an extra die to roll whenever he is uh, launching an invasion as an admiral, if he's doing a campaign, if he's using certain action cards or performing an assassination. Assassinations are an important part of this game. Um, an assassination may be an ability that an individual senator has or can be done as an action card here. Typically you're going to roll a die and if you roll a six you're going to kill and discard the target of the assassination attempt. 
If you roll a one, the assassination is going to fail and the uh, senator who launched it is going to gain one corruption. However, any player is able to try to modify that roll and for every five influences spent they can either raise or lower the die roll by one. However, anytime you roll a natural six or a one it's going to have the original impact. One last thing before we start playing the game is there's a number of concepts that are going to come up quite a bit that I need to go over. One of them is the whole concept of initiative order. Typically in this game, the later you play, it's the better it is. That way you get to see where the other folks are uh, positioning themselves and then try to take the smartest move. The way the initiative order is going to work is that the Republic fleet and any infestations is always going to have the first initiative. After that, you're going to have any of the unseated parties. They have basically parties that do not have any of the ministry positions. If there's more than one party that does not have a ministry, you're going to roll the die. Whoever rolls the highest will uh, go second. Whoever rolls the lower value will go first. Then you're going to go in order of the ministry positions, starting with the Minister of Defense, then the Minister of Justice and Finance, and then the Minister of Interior and the Prime Minister. Um, and then finally, any player who is in rebellion will move last. If you happen to control multiple uh, ministries are going to go with the best one. So for example, if your senators control both the Minister of Defense and the Prime Minister, they would move in, uh, as number seven, which would be, be the Prime Minister. Another thing that makes this game kind of unpredictable at times is the way you do your rolling of your dice. Anytime you roll a natural six, you get to re-roll the die again and then add that value to six. But if you happen to roll a second six in a roll, it's going to stop. You'll end up with a 12 but you don't get to roll it a third time. Throughout the game, there's a lot of deal making that's going on in this game. You can pretty much trade anything in this game with other players except corruption or shadow tokens. Now, anytime you're doing an immediate transfer of like money or et cetera, that's gonna happen immediately there. However, if there's promises that you're gonna do something later on in the game, that part of the deal can be broken. And if you do break a deal, you're gonna gain two corruption. Another thing you can do in this game is you can trade your resources back and forth. And you can do that at a ratio of 3 to 1. So for instance, if I wanted to trade 30 money, I would move my, my uh, money down by a factor of 30. And then I'd raise my influence up by 10 to show that I've done that. The last thing is, 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 is on senators. Each senator can basically do one action per turn. This action may be using an action card. It may be acting as an admiral during an invasion doing a campaign, or using one of the abilities as, in the corrupt, as a corrupt minister. Whenever you do that, you're going to take your card and you're going to rotate them 90 degrees to show that you've that senator is exhausted and can take no further actions that turn.